Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's December 18th, 1965, and the New York Rangers have made a trip to Maple Leaf Gardens to face the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Rangers are led by Earl Ingerfield and former Leaf Bob Nevin. The Maple Leafs counter with Dave Keon, Eddie Schack, and Bob Pulford. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Joe Bowen, and welcome to Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Maple Leafs, after winning the Stanley Cup in 1964, are finding things in 1965 to be a tad bit more difficult. They've lost Carl Brewer to retirement, Bob Bond is out with an injury, and the team is struggling defensively. They're currently in fourth place in the standings, two points back of the Detroit Red Wings. The New York Rangers, meanwhile, are arriving at Maple Leaf Gardens in the throes of yet another losing streak. They've lost 11 in a row. So it's the Leafs and the Rangers tonight, and it should be an interesting matchup. Two future Hall of Fame goaltenders are in action this evening. For the New York Rangers, it's Sudbury native Eddie Jackman. And for the Maple Leafs, Johnny Bauer will be responsible for the rigged residence. It's December 18th, 1965. It's the Leafs and Rangers. And this is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. He's escaping! The chase is on for the most lethal criminal in the universe. There's never been anything like what I have become. And when the clock hits zero, he's crossing over to our world. 30 seconds! Jet Li is the one. Opens November 2nd. Introducing Mojo AM640, talk radio for guys. Call your cable or satellite provider to subscribe. Leading the New York Rangers, Rod Gilbert and veteran Harry Howell, along with hard-nosed defenseman and former Leaf Arnie Brown. Frank Mahovlich has scored the winning goal in the last two Leaf victories. And Britt Selby is another in the long line of graduates from the famed Toronto Marlboros Junior Organization. The Kingston native who grew up in Toronto had 45 goals and 88 points in his final junior year after winning the Memorial Cup in 1964. In December of 1965, Selby is in his rookie year en route to the Calder Trophy as the top rookie in the NHL and the last Maple Leaf to have done so. And Britt Selby joins us here this evening. Britt, uh, 1965 is a magical year for you, I would think. Uh, you played three games with the Maple Leafs prior to this uh, on a call-up basis, but this is the big opportunity. This was like uh, Disneyland for me that year. I had an opportunity to play with people like uh, Pulford, and I'll have to throw in Shaq or he'll hit me. <laughs> and Red Kelly, you know, these were all my idols because as a, as a youngster, I uh, grew up in Toronto and uh, I started with the uh, Leaf organization when I was 11. So I, I you know, I was, uh, had some experience with knowing these fellows as I was growing up. Britt, uh, you're in junior hockey, really, when the Leafs are going through the, uh, the highs of uh, the 60s, three straight Stanley Cups. Uh, all of a sudden, in 65, uh, the team probably needs some tinkering or something that's going on. What's, what's the feel like in the dressing room? You, Brewer's retired, Bond's hurt, uh, and, and maybe you're having a little more difficulty in your own end of the rink? Uh, I, well, when I was looking at the game that I watched, I, I noticed that like Stanley and Pronovo, they may have been a, a, a sm or slower, but they certainly played their position well. Uh, it, when you when I was uh, compared them with the New York team, mm -hmm. with uh, I think uh, Hillman and Howell and uh, Nielsen, 
and McMahon were having problems because I don't think they'd played with each other as long as the Leaf uh, foursome had. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Leafs uh, are older, but they were wiser, and they were they didn't they didn't allow the uh, the break the breakouts as uh, as uh, often as New York did. When you get into a situation like this Leaf team, uh, you mentioned uh, the veterans that were there through all of those uh, Stanley Cups. How did they treat the brash young rookie up from the Toronto Marlboros? I can, I can only give them accolades. They, they were very professional. They, they, they accepted me, even Shaq, who I had taken his position uh, at the early part of the year, I think, uh, when Pappen was uh, sent down to Rochester, Shaq, uh, Shaq came back. They, they treated me and welcomed me, and I, I, you know, they, I felt very comfortable. So the Leafs and the New York Rangers are about to do battle at Maple Leaf Gardens. And the keys tonight, the Leafs have to play a little better in front of the China Wall defensively. They've got to get some balanced scoring from a number of the lines and shut down Earl Ingerfield. Because it's December 18th, 1965, the Leafs and Rangers. Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Hey. Aren't you going to bring your jacket? Nah, I'll be fine. It's getting chilly. Want to grab something to warm up? Yes, if you want. Nothing warms you up like a bowl of Tim's own chicken noodle soup. Enjoy any one of our hearty soups with a toasted buttered bagel and a medium coffee for just $3.59. Hey, 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 what's your hurry? Come home for lunch at Tim Hortons. Hi, I'm Dean. Hey, and I'm Darius of Hootie the Blowfish for Artists Against Racism. Racism is the worst disease you can have because it's not something you can catch, it's just something you're taught. Exactly. So let's help cure the disease. Because we don't have time to hate. The boys of winter are doing their dazzling stuff on TSN again this season. Tonight, check out regional coverage of the Leafs and Bruins live from Boston. Molson Canadian Leaf Hockey, TSN. One of the great treats of these classic games is the fact that we have footage of games that were never aired on television. This is one of them. As you might recall, if you're my age, uh, the games would start at 8.30, but the coverage on Saturday nights didn't get going until 9 o'clock. So Bill Hewitt is by himself doing play-by-play. -play. Brian McFarlane hasn't showed up yet, as they just did the play-by-play -play in order to get some highlights for maybe the intermissions. So with that in mind, here by himself, is Bill Hewitt with the first period. All set to start the first period now. Jean Rattel goes to center ice. Nevin on the right wing. Hadfield on the left. Copert, Kelly, and Shaq for the Maple Leafs. Hadfield back to Howell, number three. Ahead to Rattel. He's hit by Stanley Horton. A pass for Shaq. He's got a break on the right side. He shoots. And that was stopped by Jackman. Hadfield. Pass for Nevin at center. Shoots it into the leaf zone outside. All set for the faceoff. Goyette, Marshall, and Jill Bear now for New York. A long shot by McMahon. The rebound to Horton off Bauer. Tim Horton behind the leaf net. Got it into the crowd. Face off in the Maple Leaf zone to the right. Go ahead, Jill Bear and Marshall. Along with Mike McMahon and Harry Howell. McMahon takes his shot. Bauer has steered it off to the side. Jill Bear centered it to Goyette. There's his shot. Bauer stopped that. It's clear to Kelly. Kelly comes down over the blue line to center. Over the blue line. Took his shot. It goes to the corner. Goyette shot it.
to Marshall. Marshall clips it and hit the board. Pulford tries to keep it in. Jack ran into Goyette. Stanley takes the long shot and Jackman caught it, giving it to Mike McMahon, number six. McMahon straight ahead to Goyette. Eddie Jack intercepted his pass. Jack over the line, stopped. Better pass for Pulford just failed to click. McMahon coming down the ice at center. Over the leaf line, Stanley checked him, but it was offside at the leaf blue line. Coming up for the New York Rangers now and playing at center ice, number 10, Earl Ingerfield. Bill Hickey is number 12 on the right side. Doug Robinson, number five on the left. Boyer with Ellis and Selby. Marcel Tonable went after the puck. Boyer tries to dig it out. Still against the boards. Ingerfield drags it there with escape. On the faceoff, Selby was checked. Puck goes to Bauer. Larry Hillman. For Selby, too hard off the stick. Marcel Cotobo to Wally Boyer. Boyer over the line. Tried to hook it to Ellis. He did. Ellis getting ready to go. He shoots. Oh, what a great save. By Jackman from point blank range. Robinson trying to get up for the Rangers, covered by Ellis. Jackman ties it again with a pass to Wayne Hellman. Hickey feeds Nielsen. Pass for Robinson. Larry Hillman stepped into him. Ingerfield right on to Boyer's step. Boyer missed the check from Nielsen. Shot it back into the lead zone, and it's Marcel Prudable back for it. Gets it out over the line. Mahavrich is on the ice. Marcel Pronovo clears it down. Keon up there with him. Nielsen shooting it to Robinson, and Robinson turns with a pass. Up for Rattel, over the line. Takes his shot, and it deflects into the corner. Hillman to Armstrong. Stopped there by McMahon. McMahon trying to get his shot. Marcel Pronovo cleared it, but not out. The Rangers keep it in the lead zone. Larry Hillman to Frank Mahavlitz, up to Keon. For Mahavlitz, too far. Marcel Pronovo to Keon, trying to get in and around Howell. Howell has him covered, but he shot it behind the net. McMahon covered by Mahavlitz. Mahavlitz centered it for Keon, and Nevin picks it off. He hit Armstrong with it. Mahavlitz to Armstrong, jammed in on the board. Keon digs it out. Shot it around on the board. Horton with one go. into the corner. Horton is hit by Hatfield. Horton comes up with it, though. Back for Mahavlitz is checked. Hatfield trying to center it. Played by the Rangers behind the leap goal. Centered right in front, and it's knocked out over the blue line. Leafs making a change now. Pulford and Shaq come on the ice. Pulford intercepted a pass. Shot it back into the corner. Howell cleared it around on the board. Eddie Shack covered by Rattel. Up comes Hatfield for New York to Howell. Howell at center up over the leaf line. Takes his shot. Bauer steered it off to the wing. 
and Isaac has it. Ahead to Pope. Pope goes out over the blue line. Takes a backhand. Jackman made the save and scooped it off to Goyette. Marvelous races down the ice. Here's Nevin taking his shot. Bauer juggles it for Mahavlich. Hank Mahavlich on the left wing. Back to Stanley. Stanley moves up, takes a long shot, and Jackman stops it. Jimmy Nielsen. Off the board for Marshall. He handed it right to Kelly, and Kelly turns at his own blue line. Kelly stops. Long pass to Pulford. Pulford shoots it in. It's Stopped by Jackman off the net. Jimmy Nielsen turns for New York. His pass is to Goyette, who comes straight up the center with a pass to Marshall. Stopped by Hillman. Right back by New York. I have gotten front to Jill Beer. Turned by Marcel Cronovo to Larry Hillman. And Hillman backhands it down the ice. Not going to go fired up, and Wayne Hillman back for it. Number two of New York. His pass to Nielsen is out to Goyette. Goyette over the line outside for Marshall. This fall. He claims to be a visitor from another planet. K Pax. Prepare to meet a stranger. Maybe you could show us how this light travel works. Who will open your mind. How could you know this? And change the way you see the world. <laughs> okay, she says she doesn't like it when you sneak up on her. No way. Raptors Foundation exists to help kids. It's a chance for the players to give back to their community and they do it in so many ways. Basketball clinics, hospital visits, reading programs, 17 scholarships, and $9 million to date. These are just a few of the ways the Raptors Foundation helps children. The Raptors Foundation, lifting spirits, changing lives. Off, Goyette back to Nielsen, a long shot. Bauer stopped it. Larry Hillman. Behind the Maple Leaf goal. Do Eddie Shack. Shack trying to get it out, does. Down the left wing. Knocked it into the Ranger zone. Goes behind the net, and Nielsen clears it to Marshall. Stopped by Hillman. There's his shot, and that hit Nielsen's leg. To Jill Bear back to Goyette ahead to Marshall on the left wing. And Eddie Shack has it. Ran into Nielsen and was stopped cold. Jill Bear gets it out to center ice. Goyette. Over the blue line. Back to Marshall. Marshall took his shot. Bauer stopped that. And Marcel Cronovo has it. Up for Kelly. Tried to go around Wayne Hillman. Too well covered. Bill Bear. Pass to Marshall. Hits the puck into the leaf zone. The rebound in front of the net. Knocked by Bauer to the corner. Bill Bear hands it to Kelly. Kelly failed to get out as he was knocked down. Marcel Cronovo tries to keep it along the board. Kelly does. Gets it ahead to Pulford. Shack coming up on the right side. Pulford shot. It's
All set for the face off at center ice. Wally Boyer facing off with Earl Ingerfield. Goes back to Horton. Off the board for Ellis. He races after it. Jackman is way out of the net. Knocked it off to the corner. Robinson feeds the pass for Ingerfield, then for Hickey, but Selby is there. A pass for Ellis, stopped by Mike McMahon. He's checked by Boyer. And Howell lost it the first time, flips it in. Bauer to Horton. Cleared it around for Ellis. Goes to Ingerfield, back to McMahon. There's a shot, and that's why. Shot by Ingerfield. Ends up behind the leaf goal. Robinson centered it and went over Selby's stick. Wally Boyer missed it. Tries to get it out. Then Stanley races down the left wing with Ellis on his right. Stanley closes in, centered it right in front, and Ellis just failed to get to it. Wally Boyer covered by Robinson. McMahon makes sure of it by clearing it to center. Tim Horton over to Stanley. Off the boards intended for Boyer. Howell has turned around, but Ingerfield gets a chance. A long shot. He scores! Set to go for the face-off. Homage to Keon. For Armstrong, he's closing in. He shoots and he's shot wide. Puck is back to Hillman for Keon, covered by Wayne Hillman. Marcel Pronovo. Got it. Nielsen then gets it at center. Keon picking it up and leaving it for Mahavlis. Over for Keon on the left wing and play is called offside. No one ever anticipates that life might take a turn for the unexpected. But for the 1 in 12 Canadians who will be diagnosed this year with liver disease, life will suddenly become more precious, because sadly, there's no cure. The amazing thing is, if we all work together, we can make a difference. Every day, researchers discover new miracles. And with your generous support, the Canadian Liver Foundation will continue its search to unlock the mysteries of a disease that always hits too close to home. NBA TV. Catch the action. Call your cable or satellite provider to subscribe. Into the first period here, the Rangers and the Maple Leafs. Britt Selby is our guest. Britt, you'd played three games previous and scored a couple of goals, so you had to feel fairly confident about your rookie season and being able to play at this level. Well, I played against Detroit and New York and Chicago, and as you say, I scored the two goals. So during the summer, I had, uh, you know, my confidence was high, and I was in good shape, and I thought I had a good chance of making the club. Now, Punch obviously thought enough of you. We talked with Ron Ellis about this, and he wore sweater number 11 initially, and then uh, that was Punch's favorite number, and he said uh, he wanted to give it to you. So I uh, received number 11, but uh, the first game I played in Toronto, uh, I was introduced as Ronnie Ellis. <laughs> so uh, Jack Dennett, I don't know if you remember Jack sure. Dennett. There were, there were two Ronnie Ellis introduced that uh, 1965 season, uh, if you could see the old tapes. So. <laughs> 
Now, as far as uh, number 11 was concerned, was it, did Punch tell you that you had to wear this number, or how, how did that all come down? I, don't, I think he just gave it to me. It was, it was uh, on my, uh, in my locker, and uh, I received it. And about that time, you didn't care what number it no, was. as long it was as I was with the Leafs, the I was in the National Hockey League, and that's all <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> all right. The Leafs and the New York Rangers were in midway through the first period. Let's go back now to Bill. Mulcrey lost the draw. Marshall is in check. Kelly trying to get it out. Brings it up with Shaq. A pass for Shaq. Shaq ran into Howell. And the Rangers come back now. Gilbert with Marshall Brown and Goyette. They're over the line. Gilbert got his shot, and that's wide. Hopeford off the glass and down the ice, racing after the Shaq with Howell's in there well ahead of him. Goes behind the Ranger goal. A pass to Brown. Back behind the net to Howell. It goes to the corner. Howell gets it ahead to Goyette. And Goyette just shoots it in the lead zone. That's over the red line. Stanley will touch it. And that's icing. All set for the face off the New York Rangers zone. Boyer, Ellis, and Selby on the forward line now. Boyer gets the draw. Marcel Tonobo is shot. Jackman caught it and threw it into the corner. Robinson ahead for Ingerfield. Stopped by Marcel Tonobo. Nielsen. Check. Here's Boyer right in that goal. He shoots it. Oh, and it's underneath. Jackman, who was lying on the ice. Set for the faceoff. Cleared off the board. Larry Hillman trying to keep it in. It's cleared out. Marcel Tonovo is there, and he shoots it right back in again. Wally Boyer goes after it. Ellis to Boyer. Boyer is taken out of the play. It's up to center and goes back into the lead zone where it's cut by Selby Nettleson. All set for the faceoff in the Ranger zone. Up goes back to Jimmy Nielsen. Off to Robinson. He just gets it out over the blue line. Marcel Cronovo to Wally Boyer. He couldn't control it. Bill Hickey. Pass for Robinson. That's offside. On the faceoff, back to Nielsen, over to Wayne Hillman, number two, cleared by Ingerfield, into the leaf zone, and Larry Hillman's back for the leaf. To Marcel Conovo. Off the boards for Ellis, he missed it, goes after it again, and gets it. Ellis is jammed against the board, play is called. The best thing about the Coors Light Silver Sweet Football Party is... You don't have to play football to get in. See details at a participating bar near you. No purchase necessary must be legal drinking age. Are you ready for some football?
The Toronto Maple Leaf Community Fund is committed to supporting children's charities and community initiatives throughout Toronto. The fund raises over $1 million annually through events like the Bell Leaf Alumni Charity Golf Classic, the TD Toronto Maple Leaf Skate for Easter Seals, the Have a Heart Dinner, and many, many more. Events like these not only raise money for charities, but put the sparkle back in the kids' eyes. The Leaf Community Fund, giving back to our community. Now set for the face-off in the Maple Leaf zone to the right. Ingerfield, Hickey, and Robinson. There's a shot by Nielsen that's wide. Bauer tipping it to Larry Hill Hillman. He can't get it out. It comes in front of the net. And Robinson takes a shot. Another shot. And it goes in the net. Ingerfield. Another try. Rangers keep it in the lead zone, and Armstrong goes after it. Or Keon too far. Here come the Rangers back again as Mattel is hit. Keon can't get it out. Hatfield is checked by Mahomet. Goes over on the left side. Brown to Hatfield, and Horton gets it out over the line. A pass to Keon. Keon gets in over the line, his shot, and that was stopped by Jackman. Nevin is checked. Keon getting in front. There's his shot. Made of the first step. Armstrong took a whack at it, and Jackman covered up. Set for the face-off. Here's Armstrong getting a chance for the Leafs. For Keon, he's too well covered. Harry Howell, a pass to Nevin. Over to Hatfield. Hatfield takes a long shot in the leaf zone. Stanley is back. He's dumped by Rattel. Keon. Shot it for Armstrong. For Keon. And Horton. Up for Armstrong, to Keon, back to Horton to Stanley, for Mahavlich off the stick. Now it's Nevin. Over the line, going in alone is Brown, he shoots, and Bauer and stop that. And the Rangers trying to center it again, and they hold it against the board for a faceoff. Face off in the Maple Leaf zone to the right. Joyet, Gilbert, and Marshall. Wayne Hellman and Jimmy Nielsen. Goldfried Shack and Kelly. Marcel Turnbull and Larry Hellman. Here's a chance for Gilbert's shot, and that's wide. Donnie Marshall. Passing it in front, it's deflected over to Shack. And Cooper gets it out to center. Kelly races after it. Wayne Hillman lost it to Shaq. He's closing right in on goal. And he's dunked. And there's going to be a penalty here to Marshall. Oh. 
New York penalty to number 22, Marshall. Two minutes for tripping. The time, 14.59. Fourteen fifty-nine. Leafs have a man advantage in this first period, playing six men to five. Buford, Kelly, Shaq, Hillman, and Douglas. All set to go. Peters up there with McKenzie to kill off the penalty. Got out to center ice and down by the Rangers. Larry Hillman back for it. To Kelly. Back to Douglas. Up to Pulford. For Eddie Shack along the right wing. Peters. Watched by Shack. Cleared it to McKenzie and he wrapped it the rest of the way down the ice. Hillman. To Pulford. With Shack and Kelly. Long shot off the boards. That's missed. Here's Pulford closing in. And a shot hit a skate. Goes back to center. Douglas is there. To Hellman. Back to Douglas. Up for Pulford too far. Peters gets to it. Cleared into the corner and Nielsen has it. Nielsen shoots it down the ice. Now Douglas turns. Coming to center, he's checked. Hillman shoots it in, that's stopped by Jackman. He shoots it down the ice. Hello, Cameron hockey fans in the United States. Bill Hewitt here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The score is tied 2-2 in this first period with three minutes and 12 seconds remaining. And the Rangers are shorthanded with Marshall in the penalty box. Horton lets the shot go right off. Cleared out by Brown. He races after it. One man back. As Marshall returns, Brown hit Horton. And it hopped over Boyer's stick. Here's a chance for the Rangers. Right and never to the floor. Here's the instant playback. Watch closely now as the Leafs leave uh, Bobby Nevin unguarded in front of Johnny Bauer. Rangers hold it in that uh, Leaf zone. There's Nevin in the clear and gets it by Bauer to put the Rangers in front, three to two. The Leafs started fast tonight. Looked like it might be a one-sided hockey game, but they've been asleep the past seven or eight minutes. They were ahead two to nothing and now time 17-10. 17-10 was the time of Nevin's goal from Rattel. Here come the Rangers again over the line. Paid off to the wing. Boyer failed to get away. It goes to center ice. Back to the blue line. Howell shoots it to an open wing. Stanley picks it up. Ahead for Mahovlich, and it slides back into the Ranger zone. Jackman lost it to Mahovlich. Getting out in front, he hits Jackman with his drive. Mahovlich again, running into his check. Play is called, and there's going to be a penalty there to Brown and Mahovlich. Well, it's been quite apparent that the Big M has been in a rather surly mood the past two or three hockey games. And the Leafs haven't been unhappy with this because they say when he does get a little miserable, he gives the team a lift as he did uh, in the last two occasions, both here and in Montreal. So the big M draws his first penalty. Number four goes in with him. New York Arnie penalty, Brown. Number four, Brown. Two minutes for an elbow. Toronto penalty to number 27, Mahavik. Two minutes for Slack. 
17.53 is the time. Gilbert coming down the ice now for New York. And Horton gets in the way. Stanley tried to get it loose. Keon racing down the left wing with Armstrong. One man back. Keon closes in. He shoots. Jackman made the save. The rebound out the front. Man, there was nobody there. Jimmy Nielsen comes back for New York. Over the line, Horton ran into Nielsen, and Armstrong has it. Off the board, Stanley races after it. A pass for Keon, and Gilbert is there. Then Keon had to go through his skates. Marshall in possession. The New York Rangers have scored three unanswered goals after trailing two to nothing, and have taken a three to two lead in this first period. Keon. A pass for Armstrong. Knocked over to the wing. He'll bear back for it, number seven. Now he starts out with the middle of Less than a minute to go in the first period. Gilbert was checked by Stanley to Pulford. Pulford races after it. Nielsen trying to cover him. Pulford centered it. Martin is waiting. There's the shot, and Jackman stopped that. Stanley lets one go. Kelly gets it back to Stanley. Stanley is checking. Mattel has a break down the right wing. Trying to get in front. And Kelly gets there and scoops it to Bauer. Red Kelly. Up to center. Flipped it through for Pulford. Hit the side of the net. Mike McMahon, number six, takes over, looks up at the clock, and then shoots a long one down the ice. That's over the red line. Marcel Pronovo touches it, and that is icing, with six seconds remaining in the first period. Keon Pulford, two by Ingerfield, and one by Nevin, the goal scorers in the first period. Rather a weird first period uh, so far, insofar as the goals are concerned. Keon was all right, a tip in from a blast by Horton, but Ingerfield's uh, first goal, uh, well, Johnny Bauer didn't uh, look like the Johnny Bauer we're used to seeing on the play. And Ing Ingerfield came right back with a second effort to tie it up, then Nevin put the Rangers in front. Brian, the New York Rangers have been coming on ever since about the eight minute mark. That's right. There's a shot by Shaq. Kelly tried to get a whack at it. It goes to the boards. Nevin picks it off. And there goes the bell to end the first period. Just go out and play. Bob. Shut the up. Oh, but Bob. Bunch of whiny baby suck. Toronto Sports Radio. The Fan 590. The Toronto Maple Leafs and Center Sports present an exclusive Maple Leafs t-shirt and cap offer. Show your support for the team with this 100% cotton white tee and blue cap, both decked out with the team's logos. Get your Leafs cap and t-shirt package for just $20. Individually priced at $17 each, that's a savings of $14 in this exclusive offer for Leafs TV viewers. To order now, call 1-888-764-4444. In Toronto, dial 416-815-6193 between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Only from Center Sports. Go, Gord, go! Toronto Sports Radio, the Fan 590. It's here. Any size pizza pizza. Any three toppings. Only $9.99. Monster hungry? Get an extra large for a dollar more. Right now, order any size pizza pizza with any three toppings and free dipping sauce, and it's only $9.99. Add a buck and you've got an extra large. So what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone. Go pizza pizza, hey, hey, hey. Toronto Sports Radio, the Fan 590. This is a Raptor. This is a Raptor's brain on basketball. This is where the Raptor wants you to join him on Sunday, October 28th, Air Canada Centre. Watch Vince, Antonio, the Dream, and the Junkyard Dog practice for the upcoming season. Don't pay anything. It's free. Come join the team at the Raptors Open Practice and Tip-Off Rally, presented by Shoppers Drug Mart. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday, October 28th at 1 p.m. Remember, it's free. Maple Leafs trail the uh, New York Rangers 3-2 in a wild first period, and uh, Britt Selby is our intermission guest and our uh, 
co-host for this classic game. Britt, uh, you come into the league, a uh, young man out of junior hockey, the Marlboro organization, your dream is to play in the National Hockey League. You didn't traipse in with you a hired gun agent to do all of the negotiating. You're in there with Punch. What was it like? Well, in those days, uh, Joe, uh, the uh, managers would not allow you a, an agent. I don't even know if you would, I, I don't think I knew a lawyer at that time anyways, from a, coming from a blue collar background. Um, you, uh, you went in, he punched, I think he offered me 7,500, which was the minimum. Um, and my first year and second year, I think 8,500, and there was a minor league clause. So if you were sent to the minors, it uh, went down to about 4,500 and 5,000. So having no experience, you're almost like, should I take it? If I don't take it, he's going to, you know, have a kind of a negative attitude towards me. So you're, you're really cut between a, you know, a, what is that stone in a, a rock in a hard place? Yeah. That's right. Now, I know one of the stories about Vince Lombardi was uh, in that same era was when Jim Ringle brought in a, an agent and, and Lombardi said, just a minute, and 10 minutes later, he came back, you're talking to the wrong people, you've just been traded to Philadelphia. So the, there was, the, there was a, an enormous amount of pressure and fear and also leverage on the side of management who could say, all right, you're heading to Rochester, you're going to Pittsburgh, and, uh, or you're going elsewhere. And it wasn't just the, uh, the hold that management had on you. The players were not very... Uh, well adverse to advising you because they, it was very competitive. There was only six teams with 17 players on a team, so they weren't disclosing how much they were making. So it was a kind of a, it was a you know, closed shop. And so when that contract came across the table, did Britt Selby sign it? I think I, well, I, <laughs> I told Punch I was going to university. You know, I, 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 I had, uh, I was going to Michigan. I had a, I had a scholarship offer at Michigan Tech. So he, he upped the ante to, uh, I think it was 85 and nine, but I still had a minor league clause. So the deal is done, and Britt Selby is a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it's December the 18th, 1965. The Leafs are playing the Rangers. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The time has come to witness the power of one. Freeze! From the director of Final Destination... On November 2nd... There's only one place he could be going. One man will bend reality to control the universe. There has never been anything like what I have become. Jet Li, the one. Opens November 2nd. Toronto is making the switch to the new Energy FM. The new Energy FM at 95.3. You feel better when you have more Energy FM at 95.3. Energy FM. Toronto is making the switch to the new Energy FM. The new Energy FM at 95.3. You feel better when you have more Energy FM at 95.3. Energy FM. After Dave Keon and Bob Pulpert opened the scoring for the Maple Leafs, Earl Ingerfield took over for the New York Rangers. He scored twice, and Bob Nevin, the former Leaf and the captain of the Rangers, has made it 3 to New York. Britt Selby, uh, you mentioned you grew up in Toronto, played with the Shopsies uh, minor team, which was an affiliate of the Toronto Marlboros, graduate to the Marlies, and then on to the Maple Leafs. Um, it's the days of when you became Leaf property rather young in your life. I think it was 12 years old and uh, you couldn't uh, jump to another organization unless you were given your release. And if you were a competent player, the management didn't give you a release. So from the time I was around 12, playing for Shopsies, uh, until the time I was 19, playing my final year junior, I belonged to the Leafs. And uh, you had no alternative. You either turned pro with the Leafs, or you went to school, or you found a job. Now, as a player, uh did you find that that would have been is an easier avenue to it? Uh, you knew your peers, you knew where you stood in in, in quality and 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 how you played with your peers. Uh, did you feel confident that this was the best way of kind of getting to the Leafs? Okay, well, when I saw Ronnie Ellis having a successful year in '64, '65, I thought that possibly I might have a chance. Possibly not the next year, but maybe in the years to come. So it certainly gave me an advantage, and I could I'd stayed at home with my family. I attended uh, local schools. So there wasn't that disruption in my life. So the Leafs and the Rangers, it is 3-2 New York. We get set for the third period of December 18th, 1965. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Hey.
your jacket. Nah, I'll be fine. It's getting chilly. You want to grab something to warm up? Yes, if you want. Nothing warms you up like a bowl of Tim's own chicken noodle soup. Enjoy any one of our hearty soups with a toasted buttered bagel and a medium coffee for just $3.59. Hey, what's your hurry? Come home for lunch at Tim Hortons. Hi, I'm Dean. Hey, and I'm Darius of Hooting the Blowfish for Artists Against Racism. Racism is the worst disease you can have because it's not something you can catch, it's just something you're taught. Exactly. So let's help cure the disease. Because we don't have time to hate. The boys of winter are doing their dazzling stuff on TSN again this season. Tonight, check out regional coverage of the Leafs and Bruins live from Boston. Molson Canadian Leaf Hockey, TSN. The Leafs the north end of my left and the Rangers the south end of the right. New York three, the Leafs two, coming from behind two goals and scoring three themselves. Here's Nevin, a shot, and that hit the side of the net. Hadfield raced in for the rebound. It's knocked loose to Horton. Horton, it passed it. Nevin knocked Shaq down. There's going to be a penalty there to Nevin for cross-checking Shaq. There's Bobby Nevin going to the penalty box. He's the fellow that uh, gave Shaq the nickname Sweet Daddy. Shaq has many New nicknames. New York penalty to number eight, Nevin. Two minutes for cross check. Time, 17 seconds. We'll be talking with Eddie about some of his nicknames uh, during the intermission between the second and third period. All set for the face-off outside the blue line. It goes back to Douglas. The Leafs with a man advantage, six men to five. Tim Horton in possession over his own blue line to center. Takes a long shot. Jackman steered it to the corner. Popper to Shaq. Eddie Shaq turns for Popper. Ran into Howell. They both go down. Kelly is grabbed by Brown. McKenzie shot it, but not out. Douglas keeping it in. A shot goes wide. Eddie Shaq took a whack at it. McKenzie backhands it out and down the ice. Now then, Pulford and Brown start mixing it up. Martin coming up the center. Takes a long shot. Jackman caught it. Cleared it and hit Shaq. Shaq off the boards, lets his shot go, and that's wide. Horton moves up. Against the board, Kelly. Right in front for Shaq, trying to get his shot. Back to Horton. Horton let his shot go, that hit Brown. Kelly back to Horton again, there goes the shot. That's wide, Hooper missed the rebound. That goes had it over his stick and out to center. Cleared back into the leaf zone. Martin goes back for it. To Cooper. Coming down the ice to center. Shot it in behind the net. Kelly after in the corner. Led by the Rangers, but not out. Donnie Marshall then starts to bring it out. Up to center. Over the blue line. Takes his shot, and that's wide. Ingerfield. For Nielsen, who couldn't control it. Keon Stone. Here's the instant playback. The Rangers in no trouble on the power play. And then Keon comes in and steals the puck, as you can see. Now watch him deep, Jackman, and picks that corner. And he came close to missing the corner. Actually, it just got inside the corner. Probably he uh, was sure of it all the way. Keon, When you see Keon get a break like that, you often wonder what he's going to do because he does miss so many on those breakaways. And for Dave Keon, the second goal of the night, 9 and 10, and the time of the goal officially was 2-10. Unassisted, and that ties it up 3-3. Here's Keon trying to get it again. Arnie Brown, stopped by Keon. 
A pass to Mahalik. He's over the blue line. Waits. Still has it. Goes behind the net. Covered by Howell. Armstrong picks it up. And it deflects off his stick into the crowd. Well, there have been some strange goals scored here tonight, as you saw between periods and the videotape highlights of the first period action. Jackman away out of his net trying to stop Keon on that break. On the faceoff, Brown covered by Mahatlitz, who took him to the boards. And Keon and Brown are down. things up here well led by Frank Bobbers well, I think the Leafs must have recharged their batteries between periods because they were rather listless in the second half of the first period there's team captain George Armstrong I think they went out for a walk Brian after the first two goals all set to go and from the face off Keon back to Larry Hillman he took a shot and that caromed off the skate and right on the net Here's Rattel, missing a check from Hillman, a pass for Hadfield, stopped by Armstrong. Armstrong's knocked down from behind. Hillman gives it to Marcel Pronovo, up to Keon. Keon flipped it to an open wing, and Hadfield is there. Hadfield gets it out. Hillman to Pronovo for Armstrong. He didn't see it. Brown back to Howell. Howell hit Nevin. Keon is right there again, buzzing around over at Armstrong, off the back of his skate, offside, because he put himself offside. They played three minutes and 13 seconds of the second period. The score is tied, 3-3. That conversation with Emil Francis between periods reminds me of the time, well, they, were, they haven't won in 11 games. Lefty Gomez said, I remember once we lost 14 straight. Then we had a game rained out, and it felt so good we threw a victory dinner. <laughs> From the face-off, it's Rattel. A pass ahead to Nevin. He's given a bump by Marcel Cronovo, and it's Armstrong. Failing to get it out, Hatfield is against the boards with Armstrong, and they hold it there for a face-off. Foundation exists to help kids. It's a chance for the players to give back to their community and they do it in so many ways. Basketball clinics, hospital visits, reading programs, 17 scholarships, and nine million dollars to date. These are just a few of the ways the Raptors Foundation helps children. The Raptors Foundation, lifting spirits, changing lives. Goyette with Marshall and Gilbert now on the forward line along with Brown and Howell. Copred, Jack, and Kelly. Shaq races down the ice. Left it for Kelly. Kelly's over the line. Takes his shot. Jack him and stopped it. Copred centered it. And there was nobody there. Gilbert handed it right to Kelly. Copred standing in front of the net. And Jack him and knocked it off to the side. Pass ahead to Goyette. Stop by Larry Hillman. Here's a chance for Kelly a shot. Right in front of the net. Kelly another try for Pulper. Brown knocked it off to Jill Bear. Jill Bear goes behind the Ranger goal, clears it around for Marshall. Stop by Larry Hillman and he shot. Tries to center it. Marshall now of New York. Bring it down the ice. A long pass for Jill Bear. Nice to go around Marcel Pronovo. He's checked from behind and knocked down. Marcel Pronovo ahead to Kelly. One man back. Hopefully trying to catch up with him. It's cleared by Howell down the ice, and two Rangers colliding, and they're hurt. Boyette and Gilbert are both down on the ice after hitting one another. Well, that was a strange play. Gilbert had control of the puck and was trying to get a snapshot away at Johnny Bauer when he was sandwiched. 
And about 12 uh, feet away, Goyetta's lying on the ice, too, number 20 and number 7. And neither of them moved. While the Leafs were rushing up the ice, I glanced back at those two bodies, Bill, and uh, Johnny Bauer seemed very concerned. He came out to see what assistance he might be able to uh, offer. Now Gilbert, of course, he has that bad back anyway, is getting up very slowly. That's number seven. And uh, Goyette, he's still prone on the ice. But Goyette appears to be, or uh, Gilbert, rather, appears to be shaking it off. There he is, number seven, skating slowly toward the New York bench. And trying to get Goyette, Goyette up on his feet. Now there he's he coming around. Goyette is a real prince of a fellow, of course, a wonderful competitor, a real gentleman in every sense of the word. Bill Goyette, many good years with the Montreal Canadiens before going to New York. Well, that was certainly quite a collision in front of that leaf net. Well, while we have a moment, Bill, uh, next Saturday, well, let's give the out-of-town score first. Okay, Brian, it's Gilles Tremblay from Henry Richard and Jacques LePierre at 7.20 of the second period, and Montreal are leading Boston 1-0. Well, okay. next Saturday, Christmas Day, the Leafs are at home to Chicago. Now, Bill, I know you, you know the answer to this, but this will give the fans at home something to think about. When was the last time the Leafs were at home on Christmas Day? In other words, when did Christmas last fall on a Saturday? We'll give you the answer, mm -hmm. oh, about the third period. Fair enough, Brian. Now we'll have that face-off. Popey, Kelly, and Shaq, Larry Hellman, and Marcel Tronovo, Rattel, Hadfield, and Nevin. Back to Jimmy Nielsen. Nielsen got it around on the boards for Wayne Hellman, number two. Goes back out over the blue line, Rattel. Over here for Hadfield. Eddie Shaq is given a smash and knocked down from behind by Nielsen. And it won't take much to really start something the way they're going now. They started off. Marcel Conovo talking with Eddie Shack, who is standing right on the blue line, and Jimmy Nielsen. There, uh, there goes Shack and Conovo as Punch Imlac makes changes. Of course, Nielsen can really hand it out. He's improved remarkably since uh, coming into the league with New York. He has a lot more confidence this year than he ever did. From the face off, Stanley ahead for Keon. Armstrong tried to get to it. Horton, a pass for Keon in with Mahovlich, who takes the pass. Tried to relay it to Armstrong. It's cleared to the blue line. Shot down the ice. Hatfield races after it, and he touches it. It's offside. I wonder if uh, Punch is still as interested in Hadfield now as he was at the beginning of the season. I know he, uh, he at times expressed some interest in Vic. Number 11 with one goal and four assists at this point in the season. We have reached the 6.24 mark of this second period. The score is tied 3-3. Keon Armstrong and Mahovlich, Rattel, Nevin, and Hadfield, Nielsen, and Wayne Hillman, Martin, and Stanley. And there goes another one into the Over the fence is out. <laughs> That's the east side of Maple Leaf Gardens, the center exit, right where the players' dressing rooms are. Goes back to Stanley over his stick to Horton. Tried to clear it. Armstrong for Mahavlich. A pass for Keon right in angle. He scores! That was a good play. The lead showing a lot of class with this one. Horton. 
Army with the puck. Now watch the pass to Keon and watch this bait. A great play by Davey Keon. Ryan has the hat trick for Mr. Keon. The big end set him up perfectly. Goal, scored by number 14, Keon. Set, number 27, Mahavala, and number 10, Armstrong. The time, 6.40. 6.40 is the official time. Keon's third goal of the night, the hat trick, and his 11th of the season. Howell takes a long shot. Martin back for the rebound. He's checked by Hickey, who's dumped. There's a shot, he scores! Akerfield gets his third goal. And once again, the Leafs can be accused of some sloppy play around their own net. It gets in behind Johnny Bauer, as you'll see here on the playback. And uh, the Rangers punch away at it, and in it goes. That's Ingerfield's ninth for the year. New York goal, scored by number 10, Ingerfield. And his third of the Six, night. Number 12, Hickey. Time, 7.02. 7.02 is the time. Score is tied, 4-4. Marcel Cronable fell, a long shot for Ingerfield, and Bauer cleared it, but not out. Hellman. Knocked it out, the Rangers cleared it offside. NBA TV. Catch the action. Call your cable or satellite provider to subscribe. Boyer to Hellman. Marcel Conovo ahead to Selby. Over for Ellis. Ellis turns, he gets over the line, takes his shot, Boyer lets one go, hit the goal for Ellis right in front, Selby missed it. Cleared out the center, Selby clearing it back, Howell gets it up to Robinson, Robinson down the left wing over the line, centered it, Marcel Cronable cleared it to the blue line but not out, Howell keeps it in, Marcel Cronable then clears it out. Howell off the board for Hickey. Here's Hickey getting his chance. Oh, a shot. Oh, and that just went by the corner. All right, so Pronovo shot it, but not out. Howell keeps it in. To Goyette. Centered it right in front, and the shot goes wide. Hillman up to Selby. Too far, Arnie Brown breaks it up. Hearing pass to Jill Bear to Goyette. Goyette closes in with a shot, and that's wide. He gets it again. It goes to the corner, Wally Boyer. Add it to the blue line at center, Marshall. A pass for Jill Bear and Marcel Conovo goes back. Bearing it to Hillman. Hillman lost it to Marshall. Then it's Ellis coming up with Kelly. To center. Ellis over the line. And it's offside. Kelly on the left wing. And Ronnie Ellis skating the lead bench. And for a couple of fellas who... Uh were unconscious on the ice about three minutes ago. Goyette and Gilbert are showing amazing recuperative power. They were really flying out there. Torres tied 4-4. Nielsen hit by Shaq. Now then Goyette to Marshall. 
Gilbert is knocked down by Shaq. Cleared into the corner. Douglas knocked it off the board. Played back to the blue line. Here's a shot and it's reflected wide of the leap goal. Now then, Pulford. Clears it down the ice. There's a race for it. Kelly gets a hold of it, but it's offside. They played nine minutes and 26 seconds of the second period. It's a 4-4 tie. Hopefully knocks the puck to center ice. Jimmy Nielsen clears it right back in again. Bauer stopped it to Douglas ahead to Kelly for Pulford it goes off the skate down the ice and Nielsen is back for it he hits Shaq Shaq races after it Kelly tried to help him out still there of New York tried to go through and Stanley has it Stanley play is called and it's going to be a penalty here to the leash Douglas Now we get a chance to see if New York can uh, get a go-ahead goal Toronto here. Penalty to number 19, Two minutes for interference. Andy Baskate has scored again for Detroit from McDonald at 12.07 of the second period, and it's now Detroit 3, Chicago nothing. Douglas interference at 9.52. And it's Pulford along with Curtin back. Kill off the penalty. Rattel, Hatfield, Nevin, Gilbert, and Howell. Pass to Harry Howell. Back to Gilbert. He's coming up to center. There's his long shot. Bauer stopped it. The rebound to Larry Hillman and Pulford. Larry Hillman didn't see it. Then gets a hold of it the second time. Knocking it down the ice. Jackerman comes out of his net. It's Curtin back. He's back quickly. Into the Ranger zone. To Joe Bear to Bob Nevin. Bob Nevin over on the swing to Joe Bear. Coming up the center. Takes a long shot. Bauer stopped it. Hooper the rebound off the board, but not out. Bob Nevin closes in. There's his shot, and that was off Bauer. Howell centered it. Again to Nevin, gets away from Curtin back to Jill Bear. There's the shot. Bauer knocks it, and it hit Curtin back. Curtin back coming down the ice to center. Over the line, trying to go around Howell. Nevin hands it to Curtin back again of the Leafs. And then Jill Bear picks it off. 45 seconds left on the penalty to Douglas. Boyer comes out along with Keon. Now it's Rattel over the Leaf line. He hit Boyer, and Keon has it. Keon trying to get away, kicks it down the ice, goes after it. And Howell's there first. Shoots it around on the boards for Hatfield. Passed it down the ice. Howard lets it go. Marcel Cronobo picks it off. Shot it to center ice. Keon for Boyer. Over the line, Boyer races into the corner. Ridden off by Hatfield. Howell feeds the pass to Gilbert. Coming up the center. Over the line, Douglas is on the ice, and that was offside at the blue line. The best thing about the Coors Light Silver Sweet Football Party is you don't have to play football to get in. See details at a participating bar near you. No purchase necessary must be legal drinking age. Are you ready for some football?
Well, they tell me one of the uh, world's most popular personalities will be visiting with uh, Coach Punch Imlac between periods tonight. Not going to tell you who. All <laughs> <laughs> set for the face off outside the blue line. Jimmy Nielsen, a long shot. Bauer and steered it into the corner. Horton. Trying to bring it out. Marshall had him covered, but he gets it to Keon and Armstrong. Back to Keon. Shoots it into the Ranger zone. It ends up behind the net. Wayne Hillman cleared it along the board. Stanley tries to keep it in. Armstrong does. To Stanley. Try to send it for Keon. Marshall knocked it off to the wing. Gets it up over the blue line. Keon checks McKenzie, who ran into Keon. And Armstrong shot it into the Ranger zone. Cleared off the boards for Marshall. Up to McKenzie at center. McKenzie waits. Back to Goyette for Marshall. Sending it across in front. And Horton picks up the rebound. Ahead for Armstrong. For Keon. He drags it over the line. McKenzie and Mahamowicz with a six up high. penalties there. That's the second for the big M. We mentioned before he's been in a surly mood of late. And for those of you who follow the uh, progress of the X Leafs now at Detroit, Bathgate now has 11 goals for the Red Wings. And we heard today, Bill, that Billy Harris is headed back to Toronto and he's uh, going to take a few days and uh, consider retirement. Toronto penalty to number 27, Mahava. Two minutes for a high stick. Time, 12.54. 12.54, high sticking penalties. Ella's trying to center it. He's up there with Selby. Arnie Brown comes down the ice for New York to center. Shoots it in, Bauer stopping it. Bearing it to Ellis. Ellis, over to Stanley, he's moved up with Selby. Shot all the way down the ice, and it will be called for icing. I don't know whether the uh, folks that don't heard me over the PA, but uh, I mentioned Billy Harris was considering retirement, Bill, rather than go to the minor leagues. Of course, this number 15, which is uh, Billy Harris's old number, Wally Boyer, has certainly uh, captured the uh, imagination of the Toronto fans. Punch has a tough decision there. But I guess uh, most coaches think it's very en enviable to be able to make that kind of decision. I suppose. On the faceoff, back to Howell. And shot goes to the corner. And it's Tim Horton with it. The score is tied, 4-4. Horton is dumped. Gets back up on those skates. Coming down the right wing, over the line with Ellis. Takes a backhand, Jackman caught it. Played it behind the net into the corner. Ellis tried to center it. Went down, Ingerfield let it go right in front of his own net. Howell hits the side of the goal. Ellis gets behind it. Trying to center it, Brown hits him, then Ellis is dumped by Ingerfield, and play is called, there's going to be a penalty here to New York. Harry Howell, seemed to have his elbow up, Brian. Well, there were a lot of elbows up, and there <laughs> have been uh, since this period started. These players really bouncing each other around. The Rangers can be accused of some sloppiness New in front York of the goal there. To number three, Howell. Two minutes for Elway. The time, 13.50. 13.50 is the official time of the elbowing penalty to Harry Howell. That means the Rangers are two men short. And the Leafs one. They're playing five men to four. And then Coker, Keon, Douglas, and Kelly. Back to Kelly, over to Douglas. There goes the shot. Keon tried to get the rebound. He did to Pulford. Nevin shoots it out. Goes after it himself. Still has it. Rags it. Gets away from Pulford. Still ragging the puck. Gets it back to Nielsen. And Nielsen shoots it down the ice. Neat bit of stick handling by Bob Nevin. Red Kelly. Back to Keon. 
over the line of Pulford. Back to Douglas. To Pulford. Closing in. There's the shot. Ackerman juggles it. Holds on to it, and there'll be a face off. Well, Bobby Nevin put on uh, quite a stick handling show, and I think everybody appreciates that, Bill. The youngsters don't often get a chance to see a fellow rag the puck, the old timers, of course. That's the way they did it in the old days. Sometimes a fellow could go a minute, minute and a half. Nobody could get the puck away from him. I speak like a graybeard, don't I? <laughs> oh, I agree with you 100%, Brian. That was definitely a pretty bit of stick handling. It's nice to see it every once in a while. All set to go. Goes to the corner of the puck. Hooper digs it out, coming from the side. Back to Douglas. There goes the shot, and that missed the net. Wayne Hillman is hit by Keon. Marshall holds it there. No further play, and they'll do it again. And penalties to Mahavlich. And McKenzie have about four seconds left to go. Howell's penalty came at 13.50. We have five minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the second period. The 4-4 tie. All ready to go. It goes to Wayne Hillman. He hit the referee. Here's a chance for Keon. Back to Douglas. Douglas fakes a shot. Coming right in. Pass to Keon. Keon waits. Still has it. Chased off by Nielsen, and play is called. Well, you know, with Keon and Ingerfield, both uh, with three goal efforts tonight, it'll be interesting to see if either of them or both of them can match uh, Bobby Hull's four-goal performance of the other night, maybe even five or six the way these teams are putting them in there tonight. This is a goaltender's nightmare so far. <laughs> They're certainly left on their own tonight. All set to go. Leafs have a man advantage. Howell is still in the penalty box. Has about, about 43 seconds remaining in his penalty. Armstrong fake the pass to the blue line. Back for Keon. Larry Hillman cleared it for Douglas. Mahavlich beat him to it. Douglas cleared it back to Mahavlich. Mahavlich still has it. A pass for Keon. And Mahavlich and Brown with his sticks up high. And they're going off. It's here. Any size pizza pizza. Any three toppings. Only $9.99. Monster hungry? Get an extra large for a dollar more. Right now, order any size pizza pizza with any three toppings and free dipping sauce, and it's only $9.99. Add a buck and you've got an extra large. So what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone. Go pizza pizza, hey, hey. Toronto Maple Leafs and Center Sports present the commemorative back-to-back -back framed All-Star programs from the years 1947 and 2000. Both games remembered in this classic silver frame. This genuine piece includes two bronze coins and three All-Star pins. A $250 value exclusively for Leafs TV viewers, just $50 in this special offer. To order now, call 1-888-764-4444. In Toronto, dial 416-815-6193 between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Only from Center Sports. This is hardly in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> That'll be high sticking penalties. Crowd of New York and Mahavlich of the Leafs. Big M has spent almost as much time on this side of the rink as he has on the other. Number four, Brown. Two minutes for high stick. Crowd of penalty number 27, Mahavlich. Two minutes for high stick. Time 15:25. The Leafs have the man advantage. Five men to four. There's the score, New York four, Toronto Maple Police four. Here's Larry Hillman, a shot, that's wide. Armstrong trying to get the rebound, Keon went after it. Nielsen and Armstrong are all tangled up. And there's gonna be a penalty here. Bill Armstrong. Fifth 
1536 at the time of the tripping penalty to Armstrong. So they're four aside. Boyer. Up to center. Tried to go through. Lost the puck to Wayne Hillman. Got it back into his own zone. Howell is on the ice. Now the Leafs are shorthanded. New York Rangers with a man advantage. Five men to four. Here's Jimmy Nielsen over the line. Back to Nevin. He lost it. Boyer gets a hold of it. Shooting it down the ice. Hopefully comes out to replace Boyer. Pass to Rattel. Rattel down the left side over the blue line. Trying to go through. Does. Took his shot. Bauer stopped it. The Ranger players went after it. Howell has it inside the leaf zone. Stanley fell. Gilbert lets his shot go. And Bayer caught it and threw it off to Pulford. Bob Pulford shoots it down the ice. Howell. Starting out. Pass ahead to Gilbert. Gilbert over the blue line of Rattel. That's offside. Three minutes and three seconds remaining in the second period. A 4-4 tie. There's John Rattel. He's the boy that Rod Gilbert brought to uh, training camp when they were both playing junior hockey. Howell over to Gilbert, over the blue line. His back pass to Horton on the skate. Gilbert then a long pass for Howell. Howell closes in. There's his shot. Bauer got a piece of it. Bob Nevin. Knocked down by Pulford. The puck is against the board. And they finally hold it there for a faceoff. Four seconds left in the penalties to Brown and Mahovlich. And about 15 left for George Armstrong. Score is tied 4-4. On the face off, Marshall back to Gilbert. Over here to Howell. Back for Goyette. And now that Mohamed is on the ice with Pulford. Got it into the Ranger zone. Brown will touch it. Play well, goes right on. Now then Armstrong is on the ice. Still Bear coming down to center. A long shot is wide. Armstrong off the board and out. Kirtenbach is now up for the Leafs. Mahomlich also along with Armstrong. Stanley. For Kirtenbach, tried to deflect it for Mahomlich. It's Kirtenbach getting in on the left side and they call it outside. Well, the Big M had his foot just on the far side or the New York side of the blue line. One player not dressed for New York tonight is uh, Louis Angotti, quite a favorite here in Toronto and also a tremendous favorite, it turns out, in New York. He has replaced uh, Lou Fontanato as the Italian favorite in, uh, in Madison Square Garden. On the faceoff with a minute and 55 seconds, Ingerfield was hit by Marcel Cronovo, then Chris Selby stepped in front of him. Now it's Wayne Hillman waiting for his teammates to get on side. Back into the leaf zone, Larry Hillman fails to get it out. Peter Stemkowski to Ron Ellis. Ron Ellis trying to get away. Jimmy Nielsen broke it up. Nielsen gets his shot. That's wide. It's right in front for Enderfield. And he's shot wide. Hillman. A long pass for Ellis. They were checked. Robinson. Covered by Marcel Pronovo. Selby. I defeat Sam Kowski who's out for the first time in the game. Puck is back in the Ranger zone. Ellis stepped into Ingerfield. Sam Kowski turning. Shoots it into the Ranger zone. Jackman giving it to him. Less than a minute to go in this second period. Selby. Bears it back into the New York Rangers zone. Ingerfield is hit by Stamkowski and goes down. Back comes Hickey for the York. Checked by Marcel Pronovo. Robinson keeps it in, only to hand it to Larry Hillman. Pass for Selby too far. Wayne Hillman's pass. Stamkowski breaks it up. Left it there. Larry Hillman 
Trying to get it loose, and Hickey comes back for New York. 25 seconds remaining, a pass for Wayne Hillman. Shot it into the corner. Larry Hillman had it come out front. Here's Ingerfield with a shot. That hit somebody, hits Ingerfield again with it. Going behind the net, trying to center it. He did the Hatfield. There's his shot. It hits Stamkowski and Selby. That shoots it down the ice. Five seconds left, four as Annie Brown touches it, and it's called for a face-off in the lead zone. And Glenn and Earl Ingerfield came awfully close for number four. Well, you know, he's uh, had quite a success story. He did a lot of fancy stick handling around the net there. There was a time, though, he felt like giving up pro hockey. He didn't do too well in his first trial with New York. Eddie Shore didn't play him too much at Springfield, but uh, he's persevered, and now he's one of the brightest stars in the NHL. Four seconds remaining in this second period as we get set for the faceoff. off Patel, Hatfield, and Nevin. Kelly picks it off. Just clears it out to center and tennis ready Shack as the bell goes. He's escaping! The chase is on for the most lethal criminal in the universe. There's never been anything like what I have become. And when the clock hits zero, he's crossing over to our world. Opens everywhere Friday. Classic Rock is back. back. Classic Rock is back. Classic Rock is back. We don't get fooled again. Classic Rock is back. Classic Rock is back. Classic Rock is back. Classic Rock, Q107. Britt, we've had uh, a number of uh, alumni members uh, from the 50s and 60s who, who played, who really, of course, no VCRs. There wasn't an opportunity to go home and dissect your play and decide how uh, things could have been improved or whatever. In fact, Captain Video hasn't been arriving at the uh, Leaf bench yet for uh, a number of years yet to come. As you watch this game, uh, first off, had you seen yourself play a full game before? And, and what were your impressions when you first did see yourself wheeling and dealing out there? I hadn't seen myself too often. I think the odd time we used to see uh, Channel 11 on Sunday uh, from the junior games were telecasted. But I, I was really taken back because it didn't look like I was having too much fun out there. I, I looked like a really serious uh, uh, player, although I wasn't the only one. There weren't too many smiles at the time. And another thing, it was, uh, I, I was noted as a positional play, player, but I think that was, I was taking it to the extreme because I very seldom went off my wing. It didn't look like I had too much of a hockey imagination out there. I think I, I, I'd be a lot better if I had had uh, maybe the opportunity to see the, 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 these videos uh, when I was playing. Britt, did Punch allow you to have much imagination? We've heard the story that at one practice session for a week, he drew lines, connected the dots down the boards, and if you strayed from your wing, uh, you started doing over and backs. I think if you were a Brit Salvi, all you had to do was go up and down your wing, and that's all that was expected of you. You didn't want to go into the opposing lanes, because if a punch wouldn't have accepted it. He just wouldn't let you do it. Oh, and Jim Greger, who was, uh, the, the, our, was an excellent coach with the Marlies for, for two years, he also stressed positional play. So. It, it just we, we weren't cognizant of the alternatives that were that were uh, you know we had the op that were there, so we, we played the way they, they coached and they, what they wanted. But there weren't any other teams in the league doing differently. Uh, maybe the Chicago Blackhawks. Maybe Chicago because they used the uh, the defense much more in the play. If my memory serves me right, with Palat, and I think with uh, uh, when I when I think of the way uh, Montreal played with um, Trombley. J.C. Trombley, they utilized his, his skills much more than other teams. So uh, most of the teams were, you know, the, the, the pattern of the play was, uh, was expected, up and down hockey, pick up your man, and uh, it didn't leave much for the imagination. So the Leafs and the Rangers, uh, and this is December the 18th, 1965. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Hey.
jacket. Nah, I'll be fine. It's getting chilly. Want to grab something to warm up? Yes, if you want. Nothing warms you up like a bowl of Tim's own chicken noodle soup. Enjoy any one of our hearty soups with a toasted buttered bagel and a medium coffee for just $3.59. Hey, what's your hurry? Come home for lunch at Tim Hortons. Well, we've got two players who have hat tricks already, as Dave Keon and Earl Ingerfield have each scored three times. Bob Pulford has the other Toronto goal, and Bobby Nevin has scored for the New York Rangers. Britt Selby, 1965, ends with you winning the Calder Trophy as the National Hockey League's Rookie of the Year. And until present day, you are the last Leaf to have done so, although Wendell Clark finished a very close second uh, later on. Uh, when did you find out about this? When were you cognizant that you were in a run? Who were your chief competitors? Well, the chief competitor, competitors were Bernie Perrant of Boston, um, Marshall from New York, and I think Kenny Hodge from Chicago. But it really wasn't something that I was, you know, really thought that much about. In fact, when I was, uh, after the season, it wasn't uh, Leaf Management who informed me. It was uh, the star uh, writer, sports writer, uh, Red Burnett, who informed me. Obviously, I was quite excited at the time. I meant an extra thousand dollars in my wallet. I didn't, unfortunately, didn't have a, a team bonus. Now we we find out that that thousand dollars was very important later on because there was a very famous picture of you at Maple Leaf Gardens hanging up uh, with the Calder Trophy. And and tell us about that story. Well, immediately after the season, they had taken my picture and they they, they put it up right outside the uh, the Leaf Room in the, in the hall adjacent to the Leaf Room. And it was there for a number of years. And I don't know why it was taken down. I, I have a number of theories. One was, was that I jumped to the WHA with... Uh, That's a good one. <laughs> with, uh, ...with Quebec. Uh, but, and Mr. Beller didn't like the WHA at the time. Um, so they took it down. But I, I was at a, attending a Shopsy banquet in 72 when I was a member of the Toros. And Shopsy had been an affiliate of the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, the ushers said they had something for me, and what it was was this picture of, the, uh, of myself uh, the, during the Calder year. So I took it home, and there it was in my rec room for seven years. And then a friend, or I thought was a friend, uh, <laughs> Carl Brewer was over one day. It's always getting me in trouble, I think, Carl. <laughs> uh, Carl was over and said, that picture shouldn't be in your uh, rec room. It should be at the garden. So with the, with the help of... Uh, Brewer and Brian Conacher, it was returned to the gardens and it, it was remained up in the gardens uh, Hall of Honor for a number of years. Well, last uh, year they were doing an auction of all the old, uh, I guess, uh, pictures and sticks for the, the gardens. And I found out mine was available. And uh, I decided to, uh, to uh, take part in the auction. So I, um, I think the first uh, amount that I put forward was $500. And then someone from Brampton put 550 and I'm going crazy now. <laughs> I'm a school teacher. I don't have the big bucks. So then I put $600. It went up to $900. So I, I, I have the picture now. So I have $900. So I figured, okay, I have $900. Ten minutes later, I received uh, information from the Internet that I owe 10% uh, for the auction fee. Uh, and then I come down to the gardens to pick it up. I owe the 15% uh, for taxes. So it came to about $1,200 or $1,300 for a picture that I once had in my rec room. But, uh, it's a good thing you got the bonus for the trophy. That's, that's right, that $1,000. <laughs> it came in handy. So Britt Selby has his picture. He's en route to a Calder Trophy year, and the Maple Leafs and the New York Rangers are doing Battle at the Gardens because it's December 18, 1965. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. He claims to be not human, visitor from another planet. I'd like to begin by asking you if you know why you're here. Is the space man here yet? Why did you want to come to our planet? You're really from up there? Do you have a family on k -Pax? What's going on? How could you know this? You don't believe him. Your protus alone has been worth the trip. k -Pax. At Theatres Friday.
Raptors Foundation exists to help kids. It's a chance for the players to give back to their community and they do it in so many ways. Basketball clinics, hospital visits, reading programs, 17 scholarships, and $9 million to date. These are just a few of the ways the Raptors Foundation helps children. The Raptors Foundation, lifting spirits, changing lives. Free Bill Friday drops the puck. Mike McMahon gives it to Rattel. It hits Shaq. Now then Rattel comes down, lost it to Kelly, who just cleared it back at center. Howell takes a long shot. It's offside. Hadfield well inside the blue line on the far wing. Before we uh, precipitate any arguments at home that <laughs> might be devastating in nature, I think I'd better give you the answer now. The next time Christmas falls on a Saturday will be 1971. I'll bet a lot of them figured it out, too. All set to go now for the faceoff. Wolford flipping the puck into the Ranger zone. Nielsen going back for it. Wolford after him. Goes to Wayne Hillman. He's checked by Kelly. The puck into the corner. Mattel is given a bump. Shaq keeps it in. Took a backhand. Kelly tried to get to it. Stanley took a whack. Nielsen had it hop over his stick, and Hatfield takes over. Long pass to Rattel. Back by Pulford, Rattel gets it again to Nevin. Into the leaf zone, power out of the net, shot it off the boards. Tim Horton starts out. Coming to center with Kelly over the line, and Kelly put him offside by going in while Horton made a zig at that blue line and went to the right side. So we'll have a faceoff outside the blue line called by linesman Brent Castleman. The other linesman is John D'Amico. It was 3 to 2 New York at the end of the first period. New York outshot the Leafs 18 to 14. And in the second period, the Leafs outscored New York 2 to 1. They'll end up in a 4 4 tie. And New York outshot the Leafs 11 to 10. On the faceoff, it's back to Harry Hillman. A long shot into the corner. Kenzie shot it out again. Hillman takes another long shot, and Jackman caught it. Harry Howell getting away from Britt Selby, coming up to his own blue line to center. A long shot, Bauer stops it. Ron Ellis is knocked into the board. There's going to be a penalty here to McKenzie. Selby behind the net. Trying to bring it out. He's dumped. Play is called, and a penalty here to McKenzie. First penalty in the final period. There's John McKenzie, former Chicago Blackhawk, now with the Rangers, going to the penalty box. Twelve penalties in the hockey game to this point. New York penalty to number 14, McKenzie. Two, Two minutes for four seconds. The time, 133. A boarding penalty at 133 gives the Leafs a man advantage. Keon Mahavlich at Armstrong, Douglas, and Hillman. Here comes Hillman on a pass from Keon, back for Keon. It ends up behind the net. Nevin is checked by Armstrong, and knocked it back there. Howell, checked by Mahavlich, gives it to Armstrong. Back to Douglas. Here's the shot that just missed the target. Hillman for Armstrong. He knocks it into the corner. Armstrong trying to center it. Engerfield picks it up, coming out for New York. A long shot, and Bauer let it deflect off the stick to the glass. Douglas gets the center. Pass for Keon over the line. Back to Douglas. His shot is wide. Hellman cleared it around on the boards. Wayne Hellman back for New York. Played it, but not out. Douglas to Keon. To Mahavlich, and he's banned on his shot. Armstrong to Keon for Mahavlich. The shot's good! Here's the instant playback as the Leafs hem the Rangers into their own zone. The Big M fans on that shot, but Army shows good chasing uh, here. And watch this one right through the legs and into the net 
after Keon passed it out to Frank Mahovlich. The Leafs lead it five to four. Big M is still muttering about missing that first shot. The official time is 2.36. And the Leafs lead it 5-4. Here's New York now coming back up the center ice. Wayne Hillman up over the Leafs line. Checked by Horton. Horton can't get it out. Horton tries again. It's against the boards. Finally, it goes out to Pulford. Pulford is checked by Jimmy Nielsen. Goyette to Marshall with Jill Bear on his right. Here's a flip shot. Bauer had to stop it. Fulford is there, but covered by Goyette. And the Rangers in the leaf zone. Fulford shot it behind the net, and it's Alan Stanley. For Shaq, too hard. Jimmy Nielsen passing it at center, and Gilbert has to go back for it, number seven. Turning a pass up to Marshall. Marshall over here to Goyette, over the blue line. He left it there, and Kelly has it. I just slip it ahead for Pulford. Kelly is covered. It's hooked by Goyette to an open wing. Jill Bear, watched by Shaq. Jimmy Nielsen hits Shaq with a shot, and it comes over to Marshall, clearing into the leaf zone. Jill Bear handing it to Pulford. Clears it around Eddie Shaq. Eddie Shaq coming up the center. Takes a long shot. Ackerman made the save. Kelly moves up. Pass for Fulford. He didn't see it. It was behind him. Goyette to Jill Beer. Fulford clipping it back to Hort. Went off the stick. Gets it out again. Arnie Brown. Back for the Rangers. Over the leaf line. Took his shot. It hit Stanley. Stanley flips it down the ice. Marshall racing after it, Shaq chasing him, and cleared off the board to Brown at center, goes back to his own blue line. Ahead to Joe Bear. Right on to Wally Boyer's stick. Horton. Clearing it out. Boyer just failed to get away. Ellis knocked it high. Brown gets it with his glove. Over the line for Rattel. There's the shot. Bauer stopped it. And Wally Boyer feeds the pass to Stanley. Over here to Selby, they race over the line with Boyer, back to Stanley, shoots! Ackerman made the save, and Selby knocked Boyer down. Back comes Rattel, up the center, over to Jill Bear, over the line. Jill Bear passed it back, and Selby has it. Selby with Boyer, bearing it into the Rangers zone. Nielsen touches it, and that's icing. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Looking for nail clippers. Do you have nail clippers? You know, nail clippers? Ah, uh, clip. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is exactly what I need. Exactly. Yeah. Rated E for everyone. You're at the supermarket when your son has a temper tantrum. DUA, talk to him sternly. B, take his hand and walk away. C, give him whatever he wants. Or D, do nothing. If you don't know the answer, you're not alone. NBA TV. Catch the action. Call your cable or satellite provider to subscribe. We have reached the 522 mark of the final period. Five to four the score in favor of the Maple Leafs. On Jim Lack facing behind the lead bench. Alan Stanley who almost scored on a blistering shot just moments ago. On the faceoff, it's cleared down the ice. Ron Ellis races after with Nielsen. 
Puck goes loose. Selby takes his shot. It was knocked down. Evan checked by Boyer. Cleared off the boards to Larry Hillman. He poked it out in front and Rattel tries to get away with Hatfield. Selby skating him off. Bauer into the corner to Marcel Pronovo's check. Hillman covered by Rattel. No further play. Fritz Selby took six stitches in the game here the other night. Bill, as you recall, three uh, just under the lip and three inside. That makes uh, 24 stitches for Britt in 17 hockey games. But uh, one thing he can claim that very few hockey players in the league can claim, he still has all his own teeth. Okay, Brian, we're all set for the faceoff. Picked off by Alan Stanley. To Horton. Oblich. Back for Horton. Horton wraps it down the ice to center. Now then Armstrong nearly got loose. Rangers shoot it back. Horton to Armstrong with Mahovlich. And Mahovlich just failed to get away. Armstrong waits for his teammates to get back on side. He takes a long shot that's wide. Bob Nemen goes back. Clears it off the boards for Hatfield. Hatfield ahead to Nevin. Back into the lead zone, and Horton has it. Armstrong let it go out over the line. Jimmy Nielsen waits for his teammates to get on side. Patel tried to slip it through. There's going to be a penalty here to the Maple Leafs. And now the Rangers will have their big chance to get, get that equalizer. As Tim Horton is coming to the penalty box. Toronto penalty to number seven, Horton. Two minutes for tripping. The time, 6.43. Nastarenko has scored from Bobby Hull at 13.42 of the final period. It's now Detroit 3, Chicago 1. That assist for Hull uh, vaults him into a first place tie with Bobby Russo in the scoring race. And from the faceoff, it's Howell now to Jill Bear for Nevin. Hurting back. Failed to pass to Pulford. Joe Bear gets it over to Marshall. To Goyette. Curtin back. Races after it. Nevin beat him to it. Then Curtin back along the board. Kicks it to Marcel Pronovo. To Curtin back. It gets away from him. Joe Bear lets the shot go. And Fowler missed it the first time. And it just went past the open corner as he stepped out of the net. At the 7-11 mark of the final period, five to four for the Maple Leafs. Marcel Pronovo facing off with Goyette, back to Jill Bear. There goes the shot, it hit him, and him takes it down the eighth, and it went over a stick. He gets it again. Takes a long shot. Hillman thought he had a breakaway there, but it hopped right over his stick. Now it's Harry Howell coming back down the ice for New York. Pass to Jill Bear over the line. Hillman was at least three strides over the blue line and advanced to the puck carrier. Of course, the season's greeting signs are painted on the ice at center ice, and I'll uh, wager that Hillman will take a close look to see that the paint isn't raised just a bit because the puck <laughs> bounced about three inches in the air and his stick went right under it. Naturally, uh, the ice is perfectly level at that point. Goyette, Nevin, Marshall, Howell, and Gilbert. Donnie Marshall got it into the corner. Bauer out of the net. Marcel Pronovo there first. He fell. The puck goes loose to Marshall. Centering it back to Howell and Gilbert getting set, had to shoot it into the corner. Marcel Pronovo is down on his back. As Puck is kept in by Howell. Over to Marshall. Set it it. Howell shoots it. Bauer made the save. Okay, gets a hold of it. Cleared it out down the ice. He goes. Gets into the clear. Right it on goal. He shoots. 
Powell knocks the lead player off stride and back comes Neville. Over the line for the Rangers. Trying to go in and Stanley poked it off the curtain back. Curtain back tries to hold it against the board. He does. The best thing about the Coors Light Silver Sweet Football Party is... You don't have to play football to get in. See details at a participating bar near you. No purchase necessary must be legal drinking age. Are you ready for some football? The Toronto Maple Leaf Community Fund is committed to supporting children's charities and community initiatives throughout Toronto. The fund raises over $1 million annually through events like the Bell Leaf Alumni Charity Golf Classic, the TD Toronto Maple Leaf Skate for Easter Seals, the Have a Heart Dinner, and many, many more. Events like these not only raise money for charities, but put the sparkle back in the kids' eyes. The Leaf Community Fund, giving back to our community. Keon, Armstrong, Stanley, and Douglas. Ingerfield has scored three goals tonight, and Dave Keon has scored three. It goes to Armstrong. Horton is on the ice. Armstrong tried to get by Nielsen. Wade back into the lead zone, and Douglas ran into the Ranger player Hickey, and it's Horton coming out with Keon. A pass for Keon. Wayne Hillman broke it up, but Stanley moves up. A pass for Mahavlitz. Mahavlitz getting in on the wing. Pass it back for Horton. He took his shot. Keon tried to get to it. The Rangers bring it back. Hickey. Pass over to McKenzie. over the blue line. And he has a heavy touch from Stanley. Tried to center it. Stanley can't get it out. Engerfield centered it right in front of the net. And it goes to Mahavlitz. He rolls it out, Wayne Hillman knocks it back in again, and Horton has left it there, and it's the delayed whistle call for a face-off outside the Maple Leaf blue line. 10 minutes and 26 seconds remaining the Rangers, in the game. The Rangers making a change. Uh, there's Johnny Bauer. Boy, uh, he's had his work cut out for him the past few minutes, adjusting a glove. Billy Hickey back in the lineup for the New York Rangers. He led them in the uh, fall training uh, camp with 13 points, and then he uh, suffered pneumonia and has been out quite some time. On the face off, back to Marcel Tonovo, ahead for Selby. Howell to Brown, ahead for Hatfield. There it is behind the leap goal, Marcel Tonovo. He just shoots it down the ice. Touches it, that's icing. That's the final score from Detroit. The Detroit Red Wings three, the Chicago Blackhawks one. All set to go, Rattel, Hatfield, and Nevin. Howell and Brown. Howell took a backhand. Larry Hillman and Hetfield were fetching a little bit. Now then Ron Ellis. Straight up the center. Got it over the line. Dumped by Brown. Face off will be outside the blue line. Two close friends uh, talking to each other there. Britt Selby and Ron Ellis. Played a lot of junior hockey together. On the face off. Howell shoots it out. Larry Hillman to Wally Boyer. Backhand is right on. Yakiman to Harry Howell. Ahead to Hadfield. He's checked. Ellis covered by Raquel. Gets it again. He's knocked down by Brown. Boyer standard it right in 
front, and there's a penalty to Brown. One lesson to be learned from that, if you're going to wrestle an opponent to the ice, please don't do it within 12 feet of the referee. New York penalty number four, Brown. Two minutes for home. The time, 10.30. 10.30 is the time of the holding penalty. It's Keon, Mahopolich, Armstrong, Hillman, and Douglas. Hillman took his shot, Mahopolich another one, right across the open corner. Back to Hillman, his shot ends up in the corner behind the net now, Keon trying to center it, gets it to Mahopolich, Mahoblitz shot it back for Hillman. Hillman took his shot. Keon gets around Nielsen. Getting right in front to Mahoblitz. Oh, and Jackman down on his knees. Held it out. Kenzie and Mahoblitz. Mixing it up. Keon made a great move to get that puck in front, and I thought Mahovlich played it well. He waited that split second for Jackman to go, to go down, and he tried to lift it up and over, but of course he didn't quite have his balance, and Jackman was there waiting. Well, now we're all set to go again. The Leafs have a man advantage. Right. Keon got the draw. Mahovlich hit Howell. Keon picks it up. Back for Douglas, and it ends up on Nevin's stick. To Rattel. Try to go through, and Keon gets back. Keon to Hillman. I head to Keon. He fell. Armstrong follows up. Shot it into the corner. Mahavlitz went after the rebound. Armstrong tries to dig it out. Howell has him jammed against the boards. Keon gets the puck loose. Sitting in front. Right to Mahavlitz. Now then, Keon again for Armstrong. Nevin trying to get it out. Keon tries to dig at it. Mahovlich goes after it with Nevin. Armstrong picking it off to Hillman. Hillman took his shot and hit Keon's stick. It's left right in front of the net. And the Rangers with Rattel shoot it down the ice. 30 seconds left. And the final lead, Arnie Brown. Larry Hillman to Bob Cooper to the Ranger line. Tried to go in. Eddie Shack waits, takes his shot. Jackman made the save. Kelly tried to get it. Eddie Shack has it again. Getting in front. Takes the shot. Goal! Cooper. There's the playback. Cooper taking that puck into the corner. Shack gets one shot away. It bounces by in the air. Now watch this move in the corner as he manages to get the shot in. And let's see, was it tipped or did it go all the way, Bill? Hard to tell. Well, yeah, we'll wait for it officially, Brian, but it appeared as if Poker changed the direction Auto of the ball. Auto number 20, Poker. number 23, Shaq. Well, the goal was for Poker, but the cheers were for Shaq. <laughs> Toronto Maple Leafs, six. The New York Rangers, four. Round to Howell. A long shot. Bauer stopping it. Did he shot? He gets it out over the blue line. Harry Howell. Back in again. Same spot. Eddie Shack. This time is checked. Here's Marshall trying to get it to Joe Bear. And then went sliding by the open corner. Bob Pulford back. Came out in front. Stanley knocked it off to the wing, but not out. Rangers keep that pressure on. The putt goes high. Howell batting it with his glove. And it'll go back into the Rangers zone. Toronto 
Sports Radio, the Fan 590. It's here. Any size pizza pizza. Any three toppings. Only $9.99. Monster hungry? Get an extra large for a dollar more. Right now, order any size pizza pizza with any three toppings and free dipping sauce, and it's only $9.99. Add a buck and you've got an extra large. So what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone. Don't pizza pizza, hey, hey, hey. Don, you're just an idiot. Yeah, I should be more like you, right? You're the dink of the day. Whatever. Toronto Sports Radio, the Fan 590. Toronto Maple Leafs and Center Sports present your exclusive Leafs Insider subscription. Get the inside scoop on the team with this official Toronto Maple Leafs game program subscription. All four regular season issues plus a bonus playoff issue. Toronto Maple Leafs articles, player bios, TML trivia, and much more, all for just $25 in this exclusive offer for Leafs TV viewers. To order now, call 1-888-764-4444. In Toronto, dial 416-815-6193 between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Only from Center Sports. Just go out and play. Bob. Shut the up. Oh, but Bob. Bunch of whiny baby suck. Toronto Sports Radio, the Fan 590. This is a Raptor. This is a Raptor's brain on basketball. This is where the Raptor wants you to join him on Sunday, October 28th, Air Canada Centre. Watch Vince, Antonio, the Dream, and the Junkyard Dog practice for the upcoming season. Don't pay anything. It's free. Come join the team at the Raptors Open Practice and Tip-Off Rally, presented by Shoppers Drug Mart. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday, October 28th at 1 p.m. Remember, it's free. Exactly seven minutes remaining in the game, six to four for the Maple Leafs. Beaufort facing off with Troyette. Kelly moved into the circle. Kick to the wing. Back to Stanley. His shot is wide. Howell shoots it around on the board. Horton lets one go. Right on put the light on but it didn't go in that hit the goalkeeper no question about that one. Kelly gets it out over the line laid over on the wing to Marshall Horton gets it back at center and Howell goes back to the blue line pass ahead of center to Goyette to Gilbert he's over the line had it on his stick and lost it Stanley couldn't get it out Kelly Checked from behind by Jill Bear. He handed it right to Horton. Horton and Shaq down together. A pass for Pulper. Going in with Shaq. Yeah, gets the ball! Prettiest goal of the night coming up. Horton. Instrumental in getting this good pass over to Pulper. A great pass and watch the return pass to Shaq and Bango. It's right in there. Picture play from the Leaf Blue Line right into the New York Gold Creek. Eddie Shack from Fulford and Horton. 11 goals scored so far. Toronto goal scored by number 23, Shack. Assist number 20, Fulford, and number 7, Horton. The time 13.54. 13.54, Eddie Shack, his 11th of the season from Pulford and Horton. And Pulford at 12.23 from Shack was his 12th of the year and his second of the night. Whether you're a Leaf fan or a Ranger fan, you've got to appreciate the beauty behind that one. See Brian in front of the faceoff. Here's a chance for Rattel to Nevin. Selby. Thrown into the boards, it came out in front of the net, and Boyer is hit hard by Hatfield. Still in the lead zone, Hillman for Marcel Pronovo and Selby. Gets it out over the, to the line, but not out, then Boyer ran into Hatfield. And Boyer and Hatfield mix it up. else why not a little scrap that's more of a wrestling match Brad eh? well this Boyer is a tough cookie uh, he's a little fellow 
160 pounds, but a real tough scrapper. Well, this game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Now, the two of them are coming to the penalty box now, Hatfield and Boyer. They say that Boyer backed down from nobody in the American League, but he... Uh, he picked a pretty good-sized customer <laughs> in Vic Hadfield. He's all one of the toughest in the league. Vic Hadfield has always been a very rugged left winger. And he certainly would, is willing to take on anybody at any time, too. I don't think he was trembling in fear while that was going on. <laughs> well, Sudbury native Eddie Shack has just made it 7-4 for the Maple Leafs, and uh, Wally Boyer has gotten himself into a bit of a tussle with Vic Hadfield. Boyer wasn't a very big player, about 160 pounds or so, Britt Selby, but it's been mentioned that uh, Punch has to make a decision on him, and maybe you could explain exactly what that meant. It, a certain number of games, and then... In 1965, if a, if a player was brought up, or it was a, his initial uh, uh, year in the league, if you played uh, more than six games, you had to be waived out, meaning other teams could pick you up. So there was a good likelihood that New York or Boston, which were having to poor season would pick you up. So Punch really had a, had a hard decision for, uh, for Boyer. And so uh, do you think it crossed his mind that tussling with Vic Hadfield may add a few points in my favor uh, for Wally Boyer? I think so. If it had to be me, I think I might have picked maybe Rattel other, <laughs> other than Hadfield. H Hadfield probably was a little testy. I think he only had four goals at that time. Now, you, you, you decided to tussle with John Ferguson under similar circumstances, or did you decide? Well, my eyebrow and face did. I didn't actually. I was kind of tussling with the Harper, Terry Harper in the corner, if my memory serves me right. And I don't remember too much about it, but I was in the, in the corner tussling with Harper, as I said. And the next thing I know, I have blood all over my face, and it was Ferguson's fist. So it was, it, I wasn't really involved in it. I'd like to think I was, but I wasn't. Your face was. My face was. Yes. Yeah. So Wally Boyer is trying to stick with the Maple Leafs. He has uh, picked up a fighting major with Vic Hadfield. The Leafs lead 7-4. Let's go back upstairs to Bill Hewitt. Well, it really didn't amount to too much. It was more or less a wrestling match. And the, uh, I, I think, Brian, we have to agree that the Lions moved in there very quickly. Number 11, Hadfield. Two, two minutes, minutes for running and two minutes, minutes for fighting. Toronto Bill Leeds and number 15, Boyer. Two minutes for a and two minutes for a fight. The time is 14.33. 14.33 is the time. And they both got four minutes. Keon went for a slide. Ingerfield comes into the leaf zone. Here's a pass to McKenzie, closing in with a shot, and that's deflected over the glass. Just short of the end blues. The south end to my right. Well, McKenzie tried to make sure and hesitated that split second that often costs a goal. Five minutes and three seconds remaining. The last scoring play, Eddie Shack from Bob Fulford and Tim Horton at 13.54. Run the face off back to Tim McMahon. He's checked. And there's Curtin back. Down with Stemkowski. Over the line for Curtin back. Trying to cut in. Shot it across in front. Ingerfield knocking it to the boards. It came out in front and McMahon comes again. To McKenzie. There's a shot. Bauer stops it. Nearly broke his stick. Horton for Curtin back. Was knocked down by Mike McMahon. Here's a chance for Stemkowski. A shot. And he just missed the corner. Curtin back to Horton. To Curtin back. Missed the check, still has it, goes over the line, pulls it in, took his shot, and that went to the corner. Kenzie to Mike McMahon, who's coming out over his own blue line. Long pass, Curtin back is there. Now then, Stanley and Curtin back. Curtin back going over the line, takes his shot. Jackman made the save, Sam Kelsey raced in after it. Now it's Pulford out there. After Marshall, over the line with McKenzie. Gets around, Hooper takes his shot and it deflects to the corner. Horton, clearing it out, Hooper races after it. He goes over the line, takes his shot, score! Oh, here's the instant playback. 
starts in the lead corner again Horton is instrumental and watch Pulford as he races for that puck and a great shot to the near side look at that Jackman failed to cut off the angle and Pulford got the goal and here we go with another hat trick that's right <laughs> you're gonna run out of hats tonight right <laughs> send out for some more Trial goal scored by number 20 Pulford Set number 7 Hart time 16.15 the official time is 16:15. Colford from Horton, and that's Colford's 13th goal, 13th goal of the season. Wayne Hillman gets it through to Marshall over here to Gilbert. He takes a shot. Power stopped it to Colford. Ahead for Eddie Shaft. Take down the ice, goes Shaft. Over the line, dumped by Nielsen. Has it along the board. Doesn't want to give it up. Play it called. The time has come to witness the power of one. Freeze! From the director of Final Destination. On November 2nd, there's only one place he could be going. One man will bend reality to control the universe. There's never been anything like what I have become. Jet Li, The One, opens November 2nd. Introducing Mojo AM640, talk radio for guys. Call your cable or satellite provider to subscribe. And he seemed to enjoy himself over there. I wonder, uh, I can't answer this question, Bill, and I don't expect you to, but I wonder when the last time three hat tricks occurred in one game. We'll have to find out. I will say that for the next question. Wade Hillman back in his own zone for New York. Three minutes and three seconds remaining in the game. Pass to Gilbert. Ahead for Marshall. Marshall getting in on the left side. Pass the right side and Gilbert couldn't get to it. Here's a chance for Marshall a shot. Power stopped it. Gets it ahead to Eddie Shaft. With Pulford. And he just couldn't get it through. Here comes Marshall back for New York. Over the blue line. Back to Gilbert. Trying to get around Hillman. Pass it back to Nielsen. Right in front to Marshall. Hillman lost it. There's for Gilbert, and Marcel Cronable comes up with it. A long pass for Shaq. Hooford leaves the ice, and Keon comes out. Horton back. To Eddie Shaq. He let it go, and Horton, a pass for Keon. Keon races down the ice. Trying to go through the defense, Mike McMahon breaks it up for New York. Ahead to Nevin, over the blue line. Nevin was checked. Keon failed to get out. Nevin took it out. Over to Howell. It's Stanley and it's Keon back. To Mahavlich. Mahavlich turning in his own zone. Coming out himself. Up to center, up to the Ranger blue line, a pass to Keon. Keon stops, falls, Mike McMahon's on top of him. Hatfield is back out, so is Boyer. In the lead zone, Nevin had it outside and shot it in again. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto.
One minute and 17 seconds remaining in the game. Toronto Maple Leafs, eight. New York Rangers, four. Ellis for Boyer. Boyer gets in over the New York line. Passed it in front. Toby was waiting. And it's Nielsen passing to Hickey. Over for McKenzie. Marcel Pernival lost it. McKenzie checked by Ellis. Marcel Pernival ahead to Selby. And Boyer. Boyer back to Selby. Goes to the board. And McKenzie tries a pass for Hickey. Nowhere near him. Hickey gets it this time. And shoots it right to Larry Hillman of the league. For Ellis, on to Wayne Hillman's stick. Then Boyer checks a Ranger player, and Selby gets it in the New York zone with 30 seconds remaining. Pass back to Nielsen. Coming up the ice, two centers. 21 seconds, over the leaf line. Stop. Boyer gets it up for Selby. Missed the check from Wayne Hillman. Icky back, though, for New York. Pass to Nielsen. Over to Hickey. Over the line. Marcel Cronable steps into him. Enderfield has it with three seconds. A pass to Wayne Hillman. One second. There goes the bell, and the game is over. At the Leafs, scoring four goals in the final period. After it was a 4-4 tie. After two periods. And so the final score of tonight's game. Toronto Maple Leafs, eight. The New York Rangers, four. Hey. Nah, I'll be fine. It's getting chilly. Want to grab something to warm up? Yes, if you want. Nothing warms you up like a bowl of Tim's Own Chicken Noodle Soup. Enjoy any one of our hearty soups with a toasted buttered bagel and a medium coffee for just three fifty nine. dollars Hey, what's your hurry? Come home for lunch at Tim Hortons. Classic Rock is back. Back, back. Classic Rock is back. Classic Rock is back. Classic Rock, Q107. The boys of winter are doing their dazzling stuff on TSN again this season. Tonight, check out regional coverage of the Leafs and Bruins live from Boston. Molson Canadian Leaf Hockey, TSN. Bob Pulford ends a marvelous night at Maple Leaf Gardens with three players recording hat tricks in this game. Pulford and Keon for the Maple Leafs, Ingerfield for the New York Rangers, Bob Nevin at the other Ranger goal, Frank Mahovlich and Eddie Shack rounding out the scoring for the Maple Leafs who win it by a score of eight to four. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. And Dave Keon is uh, a marvelous athlete. A uh, very quiet man in the dressing room, very unassuming. Uh, on the ice, he was like a hound dog. He hounded the puck. He, he skated uh, so well, cut the ice down. Uh, he was in your face all night long, and he had a great scoring time. He did. On the, on the first uh, goal of the game, he was struggling on the boards with the puck, I think, with Armstrong. He got, he got hold of the puck, and he... Uh, shot it around the boards to the far side where Horton would be. I don't think uh, Keon even knew he was there or didn't realize. He knew he'd be there, but he didn't see him. So he just shot the puck around to Horton. Horton one-timed it. Keon went for the front of the net, deflected, and it was in the net before Jockerman could even react. It was a great goal. He had tremendous skills. He had skills, but he had that, that competitive edge. He, he, loved, he loved the game. He wanted, he wanted to be on the ice at all times. And he had a great deal of endurance. Like for, I think he only weighed about 160, but he, he had a great deal of endurance and that, that quickness that was a kind of a, a hallmark of his particular style. And, and a, a very fluid skater. I mean, he, he was a marvelous skater, both forward, backwards, uh, and, and uh, lateral movement was unbelievable. That's right. And, well, you could just add his.